destructive path as the ferocious storm shows no signs of weakening. The quicker we get out of here, the better. In the Florida Keys, an exodus is underway. Tonight, mandatory evacuation orders in effect. Businesses boarding up. Thousands cramming onto US-1, the only way out. President Trump declared an emergency today in Florida, Puerto Rico, and the US Virgin Islands, all threatened by the most powerful Atlantic hurricane ever seen. Irma, a Category 5, has already turned deadly on the islands of the Caribbean. The National Hurricane Center says chances have grown for a direct hit on Florida, possibly as soon as the weekend. This wall of wind and rain is only getting worse tonight as hundreds of Puerto Ricans are already in shelters and more than 200 tourists from this hotel have been evacuated out of their rooms and into a ballroom where they're expecting a very long night in the storm. Residents were warned to brace for the worst as the strongest winds in a century lashed Puerto Rico. Irma has already left plenty of evidence of its record-setting strength. Wind gusts topped 200 miles per hour, knocking out power as buildings collapsed and debris flew. St. Martin took a direct hit. Wind and pelting rain blew palm trees horizontal. Boats were left tangled in the port as cars were nearly submerged. One tourist tweeted that the noise of the storm was insane and was like standing behind a jet engine. He took shelter in the concrete stairwell of a hotel. In St. Barthelemy, roofs flew off buildings, streets became rivers as Irma continued its destructive trek past the British Virgin Islands on its way to the Florida Keys. Irma's new track has it threatening not just Florida, but Georgia, where they're sandbagging in Savannah. The Atlanta Motor Speedway opening its campgrounds for Irma's evacuees. In North Carolina, the National Guard is on the move. We are urging all people in North Carolina to be prepared for the impacts of Hurricane Irma. Like previous monster storms Hugo, Floyd, and Ivan, Irma is what's known as a classic Cape Verde hurricane formed off the west coast of Africa. They're typically among the most intense. This storm is bigger, faster, and stronger than Hurricane Andrew. Andrew sliced through South Florida and Louisiana 25 years ago, killing dozens, damaging 125,000 homes, and causing more than $25 billion in damage. With airlines canceling flights later this week and prices skyrocketing. Here we are in a little Sprinter RV headed down to Fort Myers, Florida. The Pryor family borrowed an RV and drove 16 hours overnight from Richmond, Virginia to Fort Myers to rescue 93-year-old Grandma Janet and her friend Beverly. And they're in. Tonight, they're among the millions desperately trying to escape the most powerful Atlantic storm in memory. Here are the headlines regarding Irma. Unprecedented power. We've had 185 mile per hour winds now for 24 hours. That has never happened before in recorded history. Long lines of cars snake around every gas station in South and Central Florida tonight as people try to get fuel, anticipating gas stations won't be working with a week's loss of power after this hurricane. Uh, the, Although widespread reports are many gas stations have run out, that actually happened here about an hour and a half ago, but that's the best site right now in all of South Florida, a fuel truck showing up, letting the lines form again. And as anxiety and worry and legitimate panic grow by the hour, if Irma slams first into Miami, that is six million people facing catastrophic impact. Irma won't be Eddie Pimentel's first hurricane. Scared? Yeah, I, I am. So, you know, just like I said, just you hope for the best. And Hopeful, yet and still fueling up. This longtime Florida resident is heeding warnings about what is to come. The storm is bigger, faster, and stronger than Hurricane Andrew. While officials order mandatory evacuations for the Florida Keys and Fort Lauderdale's Broward County. Out of gas, yeah? Yes, sir. It's been very frustrating. I mean, it just, uh, it's chaos out there. Chaos amid dwindling options for escape. Gas stations are closing today in the Florida Keys. Rental cars are sold out and flights are in short supply. The last plane takes off tomorrow night and the seat may be expensive. According to complaints online, one-way tickets pricing over $1,000. Hurricane Irma continues to bear down on South Florida with impact expected beginning on Friday evening. 
Broward County's mayor is calling for a local state of emergency as the most powerful hurricane ever recorded in the Atlantic Ocean made landfall in the Caribbean. This video was taken aboard a plane traveling right through the eye of the storm as it intensified. And on the ground, winds blowing at 185 miles an hour in St. John. The island of St. Martin in a total blackout and first looks at damage show major flooding. In Puerto Rico, power lines and trees down. And officials there predicting some areas will be out of electricity for up to six months. It seems to be record-breaking hurricane heading right toward Florida and Puerto Rico and other places. Those places currently under a state of emergency. I cannot stress this enough. Do not ignore evacuation orders. Remember, we can rebuild your home, but we cannot rebuild your life. Governor Scott's words come as the Gulf Coast rebuilds after Hurricane Harvey. And today, the U.S. Navy redirecting two warships on their way to help recovery there to stay off the coast of Florida instead. Planes and the National Guard also on their way. On Friday, all 6,000 remaining available National Guard members will be reporting for duty. And soon, the same will come for South Carolina. Governor Henry McMaster announcing a state of emergency in his state, but first in its path, the Florida Keys, readying for the worst and hoping only to escape. Preparing our house isn't the bad part. It's getting on the road and not knowing what we're going to run into. So we're hoping to just get out of the state of Florida. And as of this afternoon, Miami-Dade County's mayor now has joined Monroe County, the Florida Keys to the south, and Broward County, Fort Lauderdale to the north, by ordering a, a voluntary evacuation for coastal cities, including Key Biscayne and downtown Brickell. However, most people, including the mayor of Miami Beach, fully expect a mandatory evacuation order is absolutely going to come possibly as early as tomorrow. Hey, don't everybody. Here's the latest on Hurricane Irma. Still incredibly powerful. Cat 5 is 156 miles an hour. This is 185. In fact, it was interesting. A uh, fellow meteorologist of mine, Ryan Maui, actually did an updated Saffir Simpson scale, which is what we rate hurricanes on. And he actually said that there was all that buzz going on. Remember before this storm happened about it could be a cat six. Well, if you actually do the math, technically it would be categorized as a category six hurricane if there was such a thing by just using the previous numbers and expanding it. So this is definitely one for the record books. There's no doubt about that. In terms of the next three or four days, it all boils down to right here. At that point, it's going to make a turn, whether it's a harder turn, maybe east of Florida, maybe right up the east coast or the west coast. The models are pretty much in agreement that it's going to be the track that the Hurricane Center is going with. But remember, just 24 hours ago, those models had this on the west coast of Florida. It can and often does change. Uh, well, one thing that's interesting is uh, the pressure has actually come down a little bit. So even though the winds are still at 185, the pressure has come down. By about eight millibars, so that means it is still a strengthening storm, not a weakening storm, uh, and that's the bad news. Also, getting very strong winds here in Puerto Rico now. We've had some over hurricane force gusts, but the worst of it is right there at that center of that eye. That's where those 185 mile an hour winds are, and hopefully they stay just offshore of Puerto Rico as well as the Dominican Republic. That will not be the case as it moves through the Bahamas, uh, through the Turks and Caicos as well. There isn't really anything that we are seeing that will break this storm apart, other than it's hard to really forecast that a storm is going to stay at a Cat 5 uh, category for that long. Longest that's ever happened is for three days. If you look out here at the forecast, it looks like maybe we are going to see that. One other thing, Shepard, uh, we're still kind of, if you take the split the cone, we don't like to do that because anybody inside this cone could see the center of this go. Keep in mind, hurricanes aren't points either. They are larger items or larger storms that impact a lot of area. But if you were to now split the center of this, that puts a Category 4 storm very close right here off the coast of Miami sometime uh, Sunday afternoon. I am not saying that's going to happen, but it is a possibility here. Also could go a little bit off towards the east, and you'll also notice if it stays here offshore, we could have a Category 3 storm somewhere up around the Savannah, Georgia area, maybe over towards Charleston, but you'll also notice that transition there from uh, Miami up towards the Georgia coast. That would kind of be a straight line going right along the coast. This is very similar to what we saw last year with Matthew, uh, which was a storm that hugged the coast the entire way and eventually made landfall in the Carolinas. This is kind of a similar path. 
We cannot say if it goes 20 miles one way or another still yet. Uh, in fact, we probably won't be able to do that until it's happening. So uh, everybody here across parts of Florida watching this, but we also need to be watching in Georgia and South Carolina as well, Chef. So, so everybody in the entire peninsula of Florida, everyone in that peninsula is still in the sort of cone of uncertainty. Certainly. It is, it is very possible that this storm still kind of takes a little bit of a western turn here. What we know is going to happen is that the storm is going to make a right-hand turn. Where that happens is very difficult for us to say at this point.